Hi, Jenna. I've recently heard that you've made plans to go to your parents' house in the near future. It appears you're going to have to stay there for a significant amount of time, perhaps indefinitely. Would you be so kind as to explain to me the reason behind this sudden and drastic decision? Huh? How did you find out about this? Because I'm pretty sure I haven't mentioned this to anyone, not even Marshall or his dad. I wanted to keep this a secret until the last minute. Well, you see, one of your friends, the one who works at the same company as you, has a mother-in-law who happens to be acquainted with me. She told me everything. She said that you had requested a transfer to a different branch of your company, and that you had already packed most of your things. Don't try and hide it, but are you preparing to file for a divorce with Marshall? Or are you just intending to live separately from him for a while to test the waters? No, it's nothing like that. The truth is my company has given me a new assignment to work in an office that is located near my parents' house. It's a very important and challenging project, and I was chosen to lead it. Since my parents' house was within a short distance from the office, I thought it would be more convenient and economical to just move in with them instead of renting a place or commuting every day. I see. So that's the real reason why you're leaving this house, huh? And here I was, thinking that you were finally going to end your marriage with Marshall. I was so thrilled that I was going to get rid of you and stop living in this crowded and noisy multi-generational household. I was looking forward to having some peace and quiet, and some privacy. It seems that you still harbor a lot of hatred towards me, as usual, mother-in-law. You never miss a chance to insult me or make me feel unwelcome. Of course I do. Do you think I would ever like you? Me and my husband would never have agreed to move in with you two if my husband didn't suddenly suffer from severe hip pains that made him unable to walk properly. And not only that, but I had already arranged for Marshall to marry a daughter of a friend of mine who is very wealthy and influential. She's a beautiful and smart woman who comes from a respectable family. But you showed up out of the blue and married him without my consent, ruining my plans and dreams. Excuse me? But I heard that Marshall only met this friend of yours after he finished his college education. But me and Marshall have been dating each other since we were in high school. We've been in love for a long time, and we've always wanted to get married. How can you say that I came out of nowhere? If anything, this marriage proposal of yours is what was unexpected and unreasonable. You had no right to interfere with our relationship or to try to force Marshall to marrying someone he didn't love. Shut up. The only thing that matters is that Marshall is not supposed to be marrying you. That's the main reason why I dislike you, Jenna. I'm the kind of person who does not show any compassion or kindness to anyone I dislike. I only show them contempt and hostility. I see. Well, at least that makes dealing with you simpler then. I also happen to be the kind of person who believes that it is not necessary to attempt to get along with someone you dislike. I think it's better to just avoid them as much as possible and to minimize any contact or interaction with them. Huh? What's with that tone of voice? You're speaking as if you are my equal or something. You are not my equal, Jenna. I'm your mother-in-law, which means you have to obey me and respect me. You'll have to listen to what I say and do what I tell you to do. Yeah, I've heard that before. Maybe if you actually did anything useful around the house, I would have taken you seriously. But the reality is that you just lounge around all day doing nothing. Honestly, not only do you not have a job, but you don't even do the housework. You don't cook, you don't clean, you don't do the laundry, you don't do anything. You just expect me and Marshall to do everything for you while you complain and criticize us. Anyway, it looks like this conversation is not going to lead to anything productive, which is why it's fine if we just terminate our conversation here, right? I've already answered your inquiries, and continuing to talk to each other would be a waste of time since we only irritate each other. What do you mean, waste of time? I told you not to adopt that attitude with me, didn't I? I'm still conversing with you, so you just can't walk away. You have to stay and listen to me and answer my questions. I'm currently in the middle of packing my belongings, so farewell. I have more important things to do than argue with you. Goodbye, mother-in-law. I hope we never see each other again. Hey, Jenna, are you available for a chat now? There's something urgent that I need to discuss with you, something that might affect our relationship and our living situation. Marshall, what's going on? You sound very serious. Is everything okay? Well, not exactly. You see, I think we are facing a rather serious predicament right now, one that involves your mother-in-law. What do you mean, a serious predicament? Does this have anything to do with your mother? Did she do something to you or to your dad? Of course. 
You see, I discovered that she's been sneaking into our side of the house when we were both absent, when we were at work or out for some reason. What? Are you serious? How did you find out about this? How long has she been doing this? Fortunately, she wasn't able to access your room since it was always secured with a lock and a password. But she had the spare key to my room, so she was able to enter it without any trouble. Well, it's not like I had anything to conceal or hide from her. I already relocated all my valuable items and things I used for my work to my parents' house since I started working from there. I see. Well, it's good if that's the case, but it seems that I was wise when I decided to anticipate what might happen after you started working from home. I only recently found out that Mom was entering and exiting our side of the house frequently when I installed a camera in the hallway. But judging by how she was roaming around like she already knew the place inside out, there's a high probability that she's already done this multiple times before. Maybe even since we moved in with them. What? Are you serious? Do you have any clue as to why she might be doing this? What is she looking for? What is she trying to accomplish? I honestly have no clue. I examined the cameras and it doesn't really seem like she's pilfering anything. So I don't know. Maybe she's just doing it to spy on us or something. Maybe she's trying to find some dirt on us or some evidence that we are unhappy or unfaithful. The bright side is that you already moved the stuff you use for work to your parents' house, so she wasn't able to tamper with that or to sabotage your career. I mean, I couldn't really work while I was constantly worried as to whether your mom would invade my room or not. I recall how she always used to storm into my room whenever I neglected to lock it and would order me to do the housework. I told her that I was working, but she just scoffed at me and said that I was just staring at my computer all day and that there was no way that was going to earn any money. She said that I should quit my job and focus on being a good wife and daughter-in-law. Yeah, I apologize for that. My mom still doesn't comprehend that in this era, people can work from home as long as they have an internet connection. And that some jobs are actually more profitable and rewarding than others. She still thinks that the only respectable jobs are the ones that require you to wear a suit and go to an office. Oh, there's one more crucial thing I need to inform you, something that might shock you. What is it? What else did she do? Do you remember that my dad mentioned earlier about how the current multi-generational house we live in is getting quite old? And so either he would reconstruct it or we would relocate to a new place. Ugh, yeah, I heard that your grandfather was the one who constructed this house. And it hasn't been renovated ever since. It's a very old and traditional house with a lot of history and memories. Yeah, some of the wood is starting to decay and there's a risk that it could just collapse if a severe earthquake were to occur. The house is not very safe or comfortable anymore. Anyways, my mom abruptly brought up this topic while you were away, while you were at your parents' house. Why? Wait, let me guess. Knowing your mother, it was probably something about you guys moving without me, right? Something about how you should leave me behind and start a new life with her and your dad. Yep, exactly. She said that we should make arrangements while Jenna isn't here and just discreetly move out without notifying her anything. She said that we should take this opportunity to get rid of you and to free ourselves from our, your influence. What? Your mom said that to you? How could she say something so cruel and heartless? Yeah, she must assume that her son and her husband would side with her regardless of what. Or that we would be too afraid or too weak to oppose her. She must think that we are still under her control, when in reality, me and dad are almost at the end of our tolerance with her. Well, at least, thanks to her trust in us, her secret plans are no longer a secret though. We were able to find out about them before it was too late. <laughs> That's true. I'm glad that you and your dad are on my side and that you don't agree with her. Yeah. And there was something I wanted to ask your counsel slash consent for concerning the matter. Something that might change everything. Your counsel slash consent? What is it? What do you want to ask me? It's a bit too important to discuss by text. So could me and my dad come and visit you at your parents' house this weekend if possible? I want to talk to your parents about this as well. It's something really important that will determine the future of our families. Something that might surprise you, but also make you happy. Alright, I'll ask them if they're available right now. I'm curious about what you want to tell me and what you want to ask me. I hope it's something good. 
Well, I just finished talking to them and they said it's perfectly fine if you come over on Saturday afternoon. They are very happy to have you as our guests. Hey, that's great news. What time would be convenient for you guys? We don't want to impose on you or disrupt your plans. We can adjust our schedule to suit yours. My mom suggested that the five of us should have a nice lunch together at our house. She said that she wants to cook something special for you and your dad. What? Really? That's very kind of her. Yeah, my parents really like you. They think that you are a wonderful husband and a good son-in-law. So apparently you're always welcome here anytime. You don't have to worry about anything. I see. I'm glad to hear that, I suppose. I'm also very fond of your parents. They are very warm and friendly. All right. I'll gladly accept your mom's invitation. We'll be there around noon on Saturday. Is that okay? All right. We'll be looking forward to seeing you. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun together. Yep. Please tell your parents that I appreciate their invitation. And thank them for their hospitality. Okay, I will do that. Oh, and Mom was wondering what you guys wanted to eat for lunch. She said that she can make anything you like. Anything is fine, really. We're not picky eaters. <laughs> we enjoy all kinds of foods. But if I had to choose something, then maybe pasta, I guess? It sounds delicious and it's easy to make. Okay, pasta it is then. I'll let Mom know. Well then, see you later. Take care. Hi, Jenna. Thanks for having us over today. No problem, it was a pleasure. I was a bit surprised at what you had to tell us, but I see. If your father is under this much pressure, then it's probably best if we set this plan into motion as soon as possible, right? It's a miracle that he was able to hold out this long. Seriously, I didn't know that your mom was that much of a problem for you too. Yeah, my dad is a really patient man, which is probably why he was able to put up with her for so long. He says that she wasn't like this when she was younger, but over the years she suddenly became more and more... Well, you know. Anyway, I agree, we need to set this plan in motion as soon as possible. I mean, I can't stand my mom always bullying you for no reason as well. Seriously. You're the one who should be getting mad at her for making you do all the housework when you have work to do and she doesn't. Oh, and don't worry about me and dad. We've already talked this through before and that was the conclusion we came up with. I understand. This is partly because you were thinking what was best for me, right? Thanks for that. Don't worry about it. Well, that's it, I guess. Me and dad will do most of the work, so you won't have to do much. But I just want you to make sure that my mom doesn't find out about her plan. Yep, understood. It's been ages since we last talked, Jenna. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm contacting you out of the blue today, after ignoring you for so long. Well, the reason is that I have some wonderful news to share with you. Some news that will make me very, very happy. It's been ages, of course. Wonderful news, you say? What kind of news is that? Yes, absolutely wonderful news for me. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for you. <laughs> in fact, I think this is going to be the worst news you've ever heard in your life. The kind of news that will make you cry in despair. What on earth are you rambling about? What are you trying to say? The destruction of the old house we've been cohabitating for so long. It begins today. The house that you thought was your home, that you shared with your husband and in-laws. What? A destruction? What do you mean by that? That's right. A destruction. We seized the opportunity when you left for your parents' house, and we packed our bags as a family so we could tear down the house. Me and my husband and my son, the three of us. We decided to get rid of the old house and build a new one. A better one. Seems like you made a grave mistake by using your work as a pretext to escape your parents' house, but not showing up even once. You left us alone. You gave us the chance to do what we wanted. Oh, really? Is that what you did? Yes, that's really what we did. And you know what? Even my husband and my son have lost all sympathy for you. Because they followed my orders and destroyed the house, and relocated to a new place. Just like I instructed them without any objections. They agreed with me that you were a bad wife and a bad daughter-in-law, and that we were better off without you. Of course, we're not going to reveal our new address to you under any circumstances. We don't want you to bother us or find out. So this means you and Marshall are going to end your marriage. You're no longer part of the family. Is that so? I see. 
Goodbye, then. I hope you enjoy your new house and your new life. Yeah, goodbye. But you know, I expected you to have a little more reaction than just indifference. So does that mean you're okay with divorcing Marshall? I mean, you've been staying at your parents' house for the past few months, so I suppose it's inevitable. You must have fallen out of love with him. Or maybe you found someone else? I'll be sure to inform Marshall about this. I'm sure he'll be devastated, but he'll get over it. Oh, I feel so relieved now that you're out of my sight. Finally, things are going to return to the way they should be, the way I wanted them to be. Marshall, I just received a very unpleasant text message from your mother. I'm sure you already know this, but please don't fall for her lies when she claims that I'm the one who wants to end our marriage. Don't worry, I won't. What exactly did she say this time? She informed me that the old house where you grew up was going to be demolished soon. Apparently, she also complains about how you and your dad have betrayed her by taking my side in this divorce, and how you guys have refused to share our new address with her. And, as if that wasn't enough, she also implied that you and I would have no choice but to get divorced now, because she would make sure of it. Wow, you say that so calmly. But I can imagine that mom was much more dramatic and emotional when she sent you that text, right? Did she also act like she had some kind of victory over us by any chance? I really don't understand what makes her think that we're on your side though. Because it's not like me and dad have ever expressed any support for her or her actions. I mean, does she honestly believe that me and dad have just erased our memories of all the terrible things she's done to us over the years? I guess that's a result of being too narcissistic and self-centered. She always thinks that she's the only one who's right and everyone else is wrong. Do you want me to show you the text message she sent me tomorrow when we meet up? Yeah, that would be helpful. Dad says he feels partly responsible for letting her become this way because he was always too patient and forgiving with her. He says that every time she made a mistake, he would only scold her mildly and never impose any consequences. He also thinks that her lack of any meaningful activity or responsibility for the past three decades or so has contributed to her delusions. I mean, I remember that she stopped doing any housework or cooking when I was still in middle school, and she made Dad do everything for her. Oh, I'm sorry. I went off on a tangent there. That wasn't really relevant to your question, was it? Well, anyway, I would appreciate it if you could show me those texts tomorrow. Sure, no problem. By the way, I've already arrived at our new house. I'll start unpacking the stuff that I brought with me, the ones that we need right away. I'm sorry that you have to do that by yourself. Well then, I guess this is it. Me and Dad are going to go and see Mom and tell her the news that we've been hiding from her. Alright, I hope everything goes well. Good luck, and I love you. This is a disaster, Jenna. How dare you ignore my calls? How did you manage to deceive my husband and son into taking your side against me? Wow, look at all these notifications on my phone. It's like someone is spamming me. You owe me a lot of money. You have to pay me alimony for ruining my marriage. What? What are you talking about? Why do I have to pay you anything? Just because you were expecting to move with your family into a new house, but instead you ended up at your parents' house, doesn't mean you can blame me for it, you know? Don't play dumb with me. I can tell by your tone of voice that you knew about this all along, didn't you? Well, yes I did. By the way, did your husband finally divorce you, or did he just leave you out of the loop when he said that you would be moving as a family? Or maybe your son Marshall finally cut ties with you and told you that he would never tell you the new address, no matter what you do. All of that. All of that just happened to me. Why do I have to suffer all this humiliation? Why do I have to be kicked out of the family like this? It should be you who's kicked out of the family, no matter how you look at it. That just shows that you're the only one that thinks that way. Everyone else has a different opinion. Why? Why do they have a different opinion? I mean, there are many reasons, but probably the most obvious one is how you treated Marshall. You tried to force him to marry someone he didn't love, even though he already had a girlfriend. And when he married that girlfriend, who happens to meet me, you started bullying me and making my life miserable just because I ruined your plans. And then there's how you treated your husband. You squandered all of the inheritance that his parents left for him in just two years, even though it wasn't meant for you to use. And when he confronted you about this, you showed no sign of remorse or apology. But instead, you started spending the money that you two were saving up for your retirement. How do you know about all of that? How do you know so much about my personal affairs? 
Well, they told me. They confided in me about all the times you messed up, big or small. And in my opinion, it's a miracle that your husband didn't divorce you sooner. Well, it probably has something to do with how your husband is such a patient and kind man. Jenna, stop talking so much and just tell me your new address. And convince my husband to change his mind and not divorce me. And convince Marshall to forgive me and not to cut ties with me. Oh, but I thought that you hated me. And yet you're still making all these unreasonable demands from me? This is not the time to talk about such trivial things. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to help you with any of your demands. Why not? Why can't you help me? Because, just like how your husband and your son are on my side, I'm also on their side. I support them and their decisions. Huh? Then why can't you just be on my side as well? Why can't you support me in my decisions? That's not how it works, mother-in-law. Well, it looks like there is no point in talking to you any further, so I'm gonna hang up now. Huh? Wait, don't hang up on me. Talking to you is a waste of time. It's not going to benefit either of us. So, goodbye. Um, Jenna, but this is not a waste of time. This is a very important matter for me. Oh, I know. I'll make you a deal. I'll accept you as part of our family from now on. So please help me. Why aren't you replying, Jenna? Jenna, I don't understand. Why did my husband and son suddenly turn against me? But until now, they were always on my side. This is your fault, Jenna. You must have done something to trick them into siding with you or something. I knew letting Marshall marry you was a bad idea from the start. My mother-in-law was sent back to her hometown along with the stuff she thought she was going to bring to her new house. I only heard about the details from Marshall and his father later on. But apparently my mother-in-law, as usual, did none of the work herself and made her son and husband do all the work. That's probably why she didn't realize anything, including how all of her stuff was sent to a different location to her son and husband's until the day they were supposed to move. Which is when her husband told her about the divorce and her brother came to pick her up in his car. She now lives with her brother's family in the house they grew up in. She lives in a small corner of the house and is no longer as proud as she used to be when I lived with her. It seems as there she was, just some strange relative that was living with her brother since she had nowhere else to go. At a later date, Marshall's parents got divorced with the help of a lawyer. The amount of money my mother-in-law spent that wasn't hers goes up to several tens of thousands of euros. But in the end, it was decided that there would be no property division after the divorce, and she would pay back the money she spent monthly. She had to get the money from somewhere, so she found a job and started working. Luckily, she was hired by a local company to do work. Even she had basically zero work experience could do. But it seems that people in her hometown already knew that personality of hers, as many of them knew her when they were students in school. Marshall's father says she wasn't like this when she was younger and when they first fell in love. But the people who know her from school, on the other hand, say that she was always the narcissistic and selfish type and her husband was just too kind of a man to see it at first. This being the case, my ex-mother-in-law spends most of her time not working alone at home only sometimes talking to her relatives, which were the only people that would ever talk to her.